Hello everyone, I'm Milo. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, yeah, um, my plan with my brother to play Armadillo Run had to be put on hold due to his schedule, which is fine. But, um, yes, I've come up with this alternate plan, which involves uh, emulation. I know. Scandalous. Um, so for a long time, the DSiWare was thought to not be emulatable because it's tied to like the RAM or the ROM or uh, it's a bit technical, but um, when you buy a DSiWare game, uh, it's directly tied to that console. So you can't just dump a ROM of the game and then emulate it. Uh, it's a bit more tricky than that, but it is possible to get it working. Um, I had to follow uh, a set of instructions and download a specific person's uh, dump of their console, which they put online, and it came with a few little games. But then it had the op option to uh, basically put custom firmware on this virtual <laughs> DSi uh, and then sideload like any games you want into it. So I have access to the entire DSiWare library. Uh, it's worth noting at this point that a lot of the games on the DSiWare library, depending on your region, are still available in the 3DS eShop. And I'll make a note of which ones are still uh, available for, for me to purchase. Um, but mostly I'll be um, focusing on playing ones that are not available for me to purchase because it's a bit more ethical that way. <laughs> anyway, um, hi uh, Gan in chat and Gibbon as well. Good to see you both. Um, oh, Gan's doing some art. That sounds great. They say NAND storage, probably. I think I did read those words, so I think you're right about the NAND storage. Um, now, all of this had to be done in a specific emulator, which is the No Cache GBA DS emulator. Um, it's not the best DS emulator out there, so you might be able to detect some crackling in the audio on this menu screen. That doesn't affect all the audio. Some of the games uh, sound fine. Some have crackly stuff going on. Um, it has other side effects. The, the no cache emulator does not support the camera or microphone input, which is a bit of a, an obstacle for some of the games. Um, it also isn't perfectly compatible. So some of the ones that I wanted to play also don't work in the emulator, but a lot of them do, which is nice. Um, and it's improving slowly over time, I think, <laughs> from what I've read of the patch notes and such. Um, yeah, what else should do we have to cover? Um, <laughs> I had to capture the game in a vertical orientation as it is. Uh, so I filled out the sides with some art from games you'll be seeing today uh, with all, all the lovely character designs by Matt Boson of WayForward on display. Um, although I'm not 100% sure that he did the character design in Mighty Milky Way. There's nobody credited specifically for art or character design, but he is the creative director for that game. So today I'm focusing on some way forward games, but there's plenty more to come that I'll do in future streams. Um, this is just a, a folder of platformers that I put together. Um, we've got the first party or Nintendo published games in here. Some interesting stuff that will tie into other things. And um, some of these I'll only spend a little bit of time on, but there's others that I want to spend uh, more time going through them more completely. And before Gibbon gets too excited, I do have Curling Super Championship by Sopronia, but it does not run in this emulator, sadly. It sort of soft locks uh, after the title screen, which is very sad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so these are some of the things I'll be looking at um, in the next few streams, but today is all about uh, WayForward. And they supported the DSiWare pretty well, it seems. Um, not just with Shantae, but with the two mighty entries. So. Let's play a little bit of Shantae and Mighty Flip Champs, but what I want to focus most on today is Mighty Milky Way, which did not get ported off the platform. Yeah, so Gian is confirming that the audio problem is just a problem with no cache. Um, ooh. <laughs> Gian says, I'll probably find some wrecks for my modded 3DS since I have an NDS loader on it. That's a great idea. Um, uh, I guess on the topic of these being available on 3DS, 3DS is not the best way to play DS or DSiWare games because of how it renders them. Its screen is bigger, so it either blows them up 
uh, and blurs them because it's not a perfect, um, like, two times screen size or anything. Or you can play it in pixel perfect mode, but it's like quite small on the screen of the 3DS. So it's kind of neither one is perfect. Anyway, let's launch a game and I'll talk a little bit about it. So this is Shantae's Risky Revenge. Um, it's the sec it's only the second Shantae game. The first one was on Game Boy Color, but very late in the life of that system. So as you can hear, this sounds perfectly fine when you're in the game. So some like sound modes or whatever uh, are supported well by this emulator and some are not, but that's okay. Um, so this is a really cool one. Um, it is the second game, but there were other projects planned for Shantae that were cancelled. Um, there was a Game Boy Advance installment and then a DS installment, and both uh, didn't come to fruition, but some of the concepts from them seem to have made their way into this title, uh, Risky's Revenge. Ooh, life is a half genius, hard work. Ever since I ran Risky Boots out of town, every monster in Sequin Land wants a battle. The whole thing back now won't help any. Gonna have to hair him till it hurts. Um, uh, looking at it now, it's actually really small on the screen, isn't it? Because of <laughs> how the layout's arranged. Maybe what I can do is blow it up, since we don't really need to see the bottom screen. Let me try that. I can do this. And then... Oh, that won't work. Just have to drag it around. So I won't be spending too long on this, but just for while it's here, you want to get the best view of it. There we go. Uh, yeah, Gen says it's especially bad with the new 2DS XL with the larger screen. Yeah, I've got the new 3DS XL, which... Actually, yeah, the 2DS XL does have a slightly larger screen, doesn't it? Hmm, that's a good point. I think. I think it does. Anyway. Um... Uh, but again, says they don't have a DS anymore or a flash card for it. Well, there you go. I have the privilege of owning a secondhand DSi XL, the large screen, but still with the right amount of pixels, um, and a flash card, an R4 to go with it. I can put whatever I want on there because I'm cool and I'm a pirate. <laughs> Gibbon says, nah, it's fine. Well, too late, I did it. <laughs> uh, how do we talk to people again? A. Apparently it's A. This is um, Bolo. Hi, Shantae. I'm off to see your uncle's show. Want to go with? Huh? The Relic Hunter Expos today? Yeah, Sky and Wrench flew in this morning just to see it. Oh my gosh, Sky's egg. I left it sunning in the bay. Don't move muscle. So if you played Risky's Revenge, this will all be pretty familiar to you. It is quite available these days, thankfully. Um, uh, at the time when this was released, it was also simultaneously released on iOS, and that's how I first played it. It's not ideal to play traditional platformers with those kind of touchscreen controls, but I've I managed. <laughs> um, nowadays, we've got better ways to play it, of course. After a few years, it was ported to... Uh, as the director's cut, uh, it was ported to PC, so I think it's on Steam now, um, as well as on PS4, Wii U, Xbone, and Nintendo Switch. Uh, and from what I could tell, either the original release has been delisted or this was never available in Australia on the DSiWare because I, I checked my 3DS for all the games um, that I've got here, and it was not available. Okay... Yes, it's on Steam. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks, Kokoro Genso. Um, let me see. What am I going to do? Yeah, okay, we've already been here for nine minutes. So I'm going to play something else. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I really want to play Mighty Milky Way most of, most of all. So I'll just show a little bit of these other games and then focus on that one. Um, one more thing, if you're going to set this up for yourself, all the instructions are in um, a couple of tutorials, which I will link in the description of the YouTube archive for this stream. But importantly, the touchscreen won't work properly unless you first boot into the normal firmware by resetting and holding B. 
uh, which is mapped to Z for me. So uh, you reset. And this is the normal menu. <laughs> so this is what um, this user had on their <laughs> 3D on their D, uh, DSi when they dumped it. Um, apparently, some of these have end game saves, which is nice if you wanted to play any of these. Uh, and then you reset again, and as long as you set up your settings correctly, it will boot you into this alternate uh, menu. By the way, this alternate menu also supports folders, which is good because the normal DSi menu can't load more than 40 items in here. So there's a hard limit on the number of apps you can install on a DSi just by how many icons are in this row. Um, but with folders, you can get around that. Okay, let's launch Mighty Flip Champs for a little bit. Show you what that looks like. I've played this on stream a while ago, actually. Um, I love that the that opening is, is consistent between the different way forward games of the character running along the bottom of the screen, the same logos. It's really cool. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I did play this one a while back. I played um, Wendy Every Which Way, and then I played this game, but I played the PSP port, which is a bit naughty of me because this is still available on my uh, version of the 3DS eShop for DSiWare for $12. Um, and so it's a puzzle platformer. You don't jump though. Your only control, and all the face buttons do this as I'm finding out, <laughs> is to flip between the two worlds. So unlike on the PSP where the two worlds were side by side horizontally, this uses the dual screens of the DS to put one mirrored on the bottom uh, and everything's flipped, which is fun. So that's cool. So yeah, in every level your objective is to find your little fishy friend or frog guy or whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it did. Um, it got a PSP port. It was a bit different though, like because of the screen uh, shape. Um, yeah, it was arranged differently, which gives it a different feel, but it still works. The whole mirroring aspect, I think, is a really cool part of this. So you can't jump at all, but when you flip, you can climb these as long as they're available. And now that we're up here, you can actually see where you are on the bottom and then flip over. If it's not safe, you will get crushed. <laughs> um, can we talk to this guy? Apparently not. This sign. I'm trying everything. Oop. Um, okay, so what are we doing? Yeah, getting over that. So in this world, the chain is higher up. We can climb it. So you can see the main character of this one, Alta, is in that sort of collage of characters on the left. She is the one with pink hair there. You get to see lots of cool art of her in between levels. Um, yeah, so that's how this game works. It is cool. When I played the PSP port uh, again, I emulated it, so that's an option there. But now, this is an option here too. Assuming you don't just buy it on your 3DS, which is still possible. But yeah, since I'm uh, technically now pirating something that is legitimately available to me, I think I will stop playing now. First I'll show you what happens if, see on the bottom screen, I'm in a place where there's a block in the alternate world and I flip over and I get smashed. All right. So let's get over to Mighty Milky Way. Um, as you can tell by the name, they're sort of loosely connected. They're not really connected in any tangible way, but it's kind of, there's Mighty Flip Champs, there's Mighty Milky Way, and then there's Mighty Switch Force, and then there's some sequels to that as well. They're all puzzle platformers with um, these kind of cute boson style main characters. Um, that's the only thing that really connects them, but anyway. Uh, yeah, let's go with this one. So this is the exclusive. Uh, Flip Champs is also on PSP. Shantae Risky's Revenge is everywhere. Um, Mighty Milky Way has never been ported. It's exclusive to the platform, and you might see why it, it's a bit more tricky to um, 
yeah, port this one because of the way it uses the DS uh, format. Also, they put a lot of effort into this in terms of there's a vocal track in the background of the title screen, which is really cool. Um, there's even... Uh, yeah, we'll just listen to this for a little bit. It's very cool. The music in this game, as with several of WayForward's games, is by Jake Kaufman, also known as Vert, so please enjoy it. And this was never released in Australia, so I can't even get this legitimately on my 3DS. So it's very locked off for me, particularly, which is one reason I wanted to get DSiWare emulation working. It's just so I could experience this particular game. So let's get into it. Although I'm tempted to just listen to this music all day long, you know. <laughs> now, it should ask me, yeah. I don't know if this is a no cache thing, but you can see the yes uh, text is kind of squished and the no is a little bit stretched. I don't know if it's properly displaying all the pixels on the screen. Anyway, it's what we're working with. It's what we have to put up with. And I can put my controller away because this is a stylus controlled game. Touch controls. See that green girl in the space gear? That's Luna. She's on a very important assignment. The details are classified, but it looks like you've just volunteered to help. Wonderful. Let's start with the basics. Tapping the planet will pulse it. Try it now. And by pulsing the planet, It'll push Luna off in a jump. That's right. Pulsing a planet will make Luna jump off it from wherever she is standing. Be aware that you'll damage the planet by pulsing it. If you pulse a planet twice, the planet will explode. We eliminated this innocent planet by pulsing it twice. Luna will rebound off the bouncy walls until she reaches a planet to land on. Looks like we have a planet candy orbiting Luna. Let's use it up and make a planet. Tap where you want to put a planet. Be sure to pick an area with sufficient room around it. You're a natural. Remember, you can only make a planet if you have planet candy. While Luna is on this planet, let's try adjusting our gameplay. Oh, we do have controls to zoom and move faster and slower. All right, well, I'll put my controller in my hand here. So we can zoom all the way in, get to see that nice sprite rotating. Very cool. And we can zoom further out to see the whole play field. We can make Luna run, we can make her slow down. Okay. Yes, I have done so. Well, it wants me to press it now. I think you've got the idea, let's move on. So is this the first proper level then? No, this is still tutorial. So this one has a deadly barrier. Oh, okay. Oops. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. So we'll pulse the planet first and then, oops, no, because it's completely gravity-less, it looks like, microgravity. You probably shouldn't let Luna touch the laser grid. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, push now, and then hold down. It gets bigger and bigger, and then pop. Cool. So even if she's within the radius, she'll pop off to the surface, which is nice. Okay. Yes, let us go to it. Hope you're enjoying this soundtrack. Oops. Okay, did I make it? Yeah, just. <laughs> Great. Wait a second. This time it would appear Luna is joined by a vicious space monster. It looks mad too. By controlling the speed of Luna, we can avoid enemy contact without pulsing off the planet. Yes, let's do it. So I've slowed down now. This is useful stuff. I've never even played this game at all. I always stop after confirming that it works. All right, so now we're pulsing towards the goal gateway. Let's do it. Go. Okay, so the monsters also pulse. All right. Okay, tutorial over. Wait, would you like to view this lesson again? Yes or very yes? Uh. Okay. <laughs> Alright, and then it just tells you how to do it. Okay. Alright. 
the title screen is actually our hub world as well. Alright. First level. <laughs> by the way, the voice acting for Luna is done by a lady called... Um, oh, hold on. Oops. That's a bit close. Um, she does speak in French. Um, she's voiced by Amy Gaston, who only has one other credit on Moby Games, and that is uh, the French translation for WayForward's other game, Lit. Lit's an interesting one. Um, you can actually see some of the Lit characters. Oh, not on this picture. That was on another picture that I was looking at. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was like a 3D model-based game for WiiWare. And then they did sort of a, a port or an alternate version on iOS, which is what I played. Uh oh, yeah, that was way too close. So then I ran into it. Um... Yeah, there was like a 2D version that was on iOS that I played. So like a little puzzle game where you have to... You have to um, manage the light in a room to get through it. Because there's monsters in the shadows. Okay. Oh, I could zoom out. That would help, actually. Because if you zoom out, you can look further and then you can place a planet before you make the jump. And then pop. So yeah, it's a simple little concept, and I think I've seen games like this before, but I think the way it's arranged with the touch controls is pretty unique and pretty interesting. Um, and of course we get a nice little art piece in between every level, it looks like. I wonder if they're all unique. Um, Luna in an alternate costume there. I don't know how many levels there are, actually. Oh, I was looking for, like, videos, and I think I saw one that was like, this is the final level, 410. So if there's four worlds of 10 levels, then that's maybe how many we're, go we're going to be seeing today. If I get through them, maybe if I go too slow, we will not get through them. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm very thankful for the top screen at the moment with its little... Ooh, yeah. Uh, there's a little line extending from Luna's head that will show you the direction that she goes in so you can line that up. <laughs> what is this happening now? Okay. So the mission in the game, which is unknown, uh, has something to do with this kind of cyborg T-Rex, named T-Rex, who is apparently thrashing Luna at the hot dog eating contest. Very cool. Oh yes, and excuse the cursor on the screen, although it will tell you where I'm tapping, which I guess is a little bit useful. Okay, so we've got some enemies over here. We will be able to pulse them off into the lasers. Oops. <laughs> I'm trying to pick up the French uh, that she's saying. Um, I haven't done French since year 10 in high school. Uh, but there are aspects of the language that you never really forget. Um, sometimes you can guess at the meanings of some words because English shares, you know, ancestry with French. Oops, that wasn't far enough. So I pulsed that other enemy off into the side. Oh, this is not good. Let's drop another planet. Uh, okay, thankfully it stopped. That was lucky. <laughs> Close one. Oh, cool. All right, if you look around, there is Mighty Flip Champs merchandise everywhere. Posters on the wall, on the screen, even toys on the shelves. And Luna appears to be clutching a soft toy of the frog character from 
who was the objective of Mighty Flip Champs. Very cute. <laughs> Little cross promotion there. Oh, okay, a metallic planet. This is probably going to... Oh, no, that's not right. We need to go the other way and grab that other candy first. You can see the planet candy has a tiny yellow dot on the top screen. Et maintenant, la futilité. And now, uh, futility, I guess. This is what I mean about trying to guess meanings of words by them being similar to English. So yeah, we'll grab that. That'll let us proceed. I guess the metal planets are invincible and you can pulse them as many times as you need. That's what I assume. And we need that other... Uh, yeah. That other space candy over there now to make it to the gateway. Slow down. Just got the timer right. This is essentially still a puzzle platform, but a very unconventional one, which is cool. Very different. I have played platformers that are based around tiny planets before. I can't recall any off the top of my head. <laughs> um, there's a couple of indie ones that are around. I think I've only played demos and stuff. Nothing that I've internalized apparently. Alright, let's go! Yeah, luckily there's a bit of leeway. You get cl pretty close to the black hole, you go in the black hole, so that's cool. And what a nice little animation. Alright, so we're seeing a repeat art there. So it's not going to be 40 unique uh, art pieces, unfortunately, but oh well. Oh, I wish, I wish I could capture all of her speech and put it into a translator. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Any French speakers out there, please let me know. <laughs> Zero G platforming. Very cool. So let's just try avoiding that altogether. I'll go. Oh, no, we can't avoid it. Go faster. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just made it. Now, does the game tell you what level you're on or anything? Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, let's blow up all these planets. Very cool. Yeah, it never really says, does it? Oh, well. Just keep playing until the game tells us we're done. It seems like the hub world has space for more things, so I assume there's going to be... That's how they break up the, like, worlds. So those hub planets. Oh, I can actually stop completely. That's handy. Oh, and it is Luna actually doing something active to the planet to blow it up. Let's zoom in. So what happens here? We tell her... She's like... Has she pulled out something or is she just punching the ground? And yeah, you can tap the directional buttons multiple times. Yeah, it's like she pulls out a little... Oh, of course! You can actually see it in the artwork on the right side uh, of our layout here. Um, what are we doing? Oh, we're getting one more first, just in case. Yeah, she's got a little uh, wand or stuff with a little meteor planetoid on the end. And that's what she's smashing into the planet to destroy it. 
Well, destroying it is a side effect. She's creating a pulse that will propel her through space. Very important. Her mission is important, apparently. We, we don't know what it is yet. Big one. Trying to line these up properly. <clears throat> All right. Um. Ooh, no, too close. <sighs> Sadly, I also cannot save state. Emulators often have save state functions, of course, but no cache GBA when running the DS does not support it, apparently, because I tried it and it just crashed, so. We just have to replay levels if we fail them, but that's okay. Gonna have a chill time today with Mighty Milky Way. Considering how long this is taking, I don't think I'll get through the whole thing. But hopefully we see a bit more of Luna and T-Rex in the interstitial art pieces. Um, yeah, so... Luna... Like I said, this game's never been ported or anything, but she has appeared uh, briefly in one other capacity. Um, so, you know, Shantae shows up all over the place all the time. Um, Patricia Wagon, of course, from Mighty Switch Force, has several games of her own. Uh, Alta, yeah, not so much. Uh, along with Luna from Flip Champs and Milky Way, but... Um, they do have one other appearance. Um, it helps that, you know, this sort of sub-series of Mighty Games is one of WayForward's few non-licensed games, so they own... Oh, what have I done? What have I done? I could go back this way. And I'll have to really carefully manage my candies. Okay. Just don't hit that one. Okay. And I can do this. Okay. Um, yeah, so they own, you know, this series or whatever. Whereas, otherwise they do a lot of licensed stuff. Um, but if you know the game IDARB, hashtag I-D-A-R-B, that was a, a sort of Microsoft exclusive game. Oh, come on. This better work. Oh, so close, but I made it. Yeah, so this was a an Xbox game. It's kind of a fun, um, I would call it a sports platformer, sort of. It's, or more like a sports game with platforming mechanics. Yeah. It's like a competitive side view soccer type thing, basketball. It's like, yeah, it's a made up sport. Anyway, it's really cute. Got a lot of little character sprites with no animation so you can make custom ones and they made a lot of custom ones officially to be pre-loaded in the game including a way forward team okay so what is this telling us about the relationship between luna and t-rex i guess they're married in the 1950s sitcom world or something um yeah well, it's space. An alien can be married to a robot dinosaur, cyborg dinosaur. All good. Um, anyway, for iDub, there was a lot of guest characters. There's a rare team as well as a killer instinct team. Um, and there's a way forward team. So, of course, with Shantae being one of their most enduring properties, original properties, probably the most, uh, Shantae has four characters in the team. Whenever I w want to reference this, I always have to go looking really hard because nobody's like, or not that I could find, you know, readily available images of the teams in iDob and who's in them. Like DK Vine has pictures of some characters from it because because of the rare team. Um, but yeah, like I found it on Frank. 
uh, Chifaldi's uh, Twitter account saying this is art from our upcoming game iDub. So I guess he was involved in the development of it. And yeah, so I guess it's like, it's there, you know, with WayForward's permission. Matt Boson is credited in iDub's credits. Uh, with so anyway, yeah. So it's like Shante and <laughs> some other people. I have the tweet here. I'll just go check it. Yeah, so it's Risky and um, Roddy Tops and Sky. And then there's Patricia Wagon, Alter, Luna, and... I think her name is Guppy, the character from Extreme Sports on the Game Boy Color, another way forward game that I've played on stream with that same character design style. So that's fun. Guppy getting a look in again after all these years. <laughs> um, and that's, as far as I know, Luna's only other like game appearance. Okay. Probably didn't need all these candies. Yeah, I think you're right, Gibbon. Nobody documents iDob, which is a shame because there's so much cool stuff in there. Not just the the rare team and the way forward team. There's tons of characters in there as well as the ability to make custom characters. So I guess this is Luna's pajamas. She still wears her space helmet. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what she... There's like some greenery just to her right, the left of the picture. Is she holding that or what? Oh, it's like a little plant that's sprouting out of the surface of this planetoid. I don't know why she's wearing like tracky a tracksuit though. Tracky Dax. Okay. Yeah, so we really need some iDob documentation. I searched for a lot of things. I searched for iDob wiki no such thing exists. Pictures of it on various game documentation sites. Like... Not... Not much... Oh, really? Misjudged that angle there. I remember some of the characters that were included in the DK Vine Gallery because they were so silly was Glass of Orange Juice, who is in the Breakfast Foods team, along with a uh, slice of bacon and piece of toast and stuff. There's a there's a team of dead presidents, so Richard Nixon is in the DK Mine Gallery. Uh, presidents of the US. Um, who else is there? That's all I can remember. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of other licensed guest characters as well. I saw some screenshots that had Worms from Worms by Team 17. Okay, that's better. We just have to land between all these blobs on the next planet. So I might have to wait a bit. Go! So the blobs, the enemies freeze briefly when you land on a planet. Um, yes, as Gibbon says, the DKU classic, glass of orange juice. So this level's tricky because some of the planets are very close to the edges, which means you can't... Wait! Ah, so that's a planet you just have to avoid because you're inevitably going to run clockwise around it um, to smash into that laser or whatever it is. Oops. Oh, it's going too fast. <laughs> Say two. It's like, that's all. Say is like C apostrophe E S T, which is like sa a, like that is, and then two is all, or everything. If 
you want to say everyone, it's tout le monde, or all the world. It's kind of idiomatic, I suppose. There you go, some French lessons. Oh, that other little blob actually landed on this planet. <laughs> well, I'm glad she's having fun. I am too. Oops, that's a bad angle. Oh no! Get off there, quick. Hope this goes okay. Angle looks good. Yep, we made it. Awesome. That was a tricky one. Wish I knew what level I was on. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh no. The music's become really epic. The T-Rex is destroying planets. Why is it trying to kill me? Uh-oh. That was close. Let's grab this candy. Oops, I misclicked. So when the T-Rex destroys a planet, you automatically get pulsed away. Hmm. Perhaps they're having a lover's tiff. Or oh, she's on the run. <laughs> Considering what we saw of their relationship earlier. Oh wow, that was a cool little slingshot maneuver. Okay. Or it's possible that the illustrations aren't meant to be literal to the character dynamics. Okay. That is a funny looking T-Rex down there. Oh, it blew up, okay. I guess it blew up. <laughs> so that's cool. That's probably the end of that world. Great. World 2 has opened up. What's the time? Yeah, we're doing pretty well. I might be able to get through this whole game today. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, this is also what I was hoping for. A new uh, graphics set for this world. Gen says, this is wild. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Okay, what's going on here? Now we've got floating enemies. I'm gonna try and maneuver around them. So I can do this. Yep, that works. Yeah, new mechanics for the new world. That's nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> we just made it in the radius of that. Well, it looks more like a blue hole or a white hole right now, but still sucking just the same. A white hole? What is it? I've never seen one before. No one has. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, it's all bouncy, so we can do this. No, that's not bouncy. Is it? Oh no, thorns. So what's the deal here? What are we aiming for? We're gonna try and bounce the little guy off into an enemy, possibly. That could work. I'll try it. I was holding down the button at first to... Oh, great! Uh, to pulse off a planet, to, uh, sorry, to adjust my speed, but you just have to tap it and there'll be an indication of your speed there on the bottom of the top screen. And yes, smashing that blob enemy into the airborne enemies caused a chain reaction and blew them all up, so that's how you get through the, that kind of thing. We get, we get this very confusing art piece again, <laughs> making us question the whole premise of the game, but it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? It's cool. Alright, so these are bouncy. Are they? They still look deadly, but there's a green outline on the screen. Oh, the purple one is safe, I guess. Yeah, okay. For this level. So what are we trying to do here? Oh, I actually do have one. Okay. I might not need the extra candies over there, actually. If I just position myself here and do this. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Shaboom, kaboom. Oh no, I do need one, but I have one. So that's fine. So I can do this. Oh, I don't even need one if I do this. Smash. And now go back. 
and that's it. So those other candies are like a possible safety net for you for positioning and such, but with some clever play you can fast track your goal there. Cool, cool, cool. Cool beans. Say a two. Alright. This time we're gonna need to use those blobs, shoot them over there to get rid of those enemies. I think we'll only need one, so we'll do this. Oh, need to do it again. The big planets, they still grip you in their gravity. Okay. Hold it. Oh. Ooh, that's a little dangerous. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bad angle. Slingshot myself around instead. But I was on the right track. I think from there I'd be able to then bounce over. Yeah. I think that's doable. Could even do a direct shot from here. Oh. Problem is, if a blob goes into the thorn wall, it will die straight away. Yeah, I think we're good from here. Just have to get around to this position. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, I forgot that would happen. So I have to do this direct shot. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm, that looks right. This time the bouncy texture is grassy. Perfect. <laughs> That's very cute. Although, it looks like her straw is not able to pass through the helmet. <laughs> Too bad for her. <laughs> I love these artworks. Yeah, so I'm thinking how you would port this game these days. You could do it on smart devices probably, since it does rely heavily on a touch control. Um, and if you have the higher resolution devices that we have today, Maybe that would work well. Because the other thing is that there's two screens, you know, one of them showing the detail, the detail of what's happening currently. Oh yeah, we're boned. And the other screen has an overview map. If you could see the whole level at once, you wouldn't need that, but you might not be able to have as, as many of the large complex levels that this has. So you could do a sequel that um, has more compact level design probably. Or if you could zoom around that would work too. You know, two finger scrolling or something. So we actually do need to get past that blob all the way over to destroy the other blob. So it's these enemy interactions. Oops, oh, I wasted that. That's okay. Nope, I'm gonna need that. <laughs> so we'll have to restart that level. We can restart from the menu, great. Oh, and the pause menu does actually tell us what level we're on. So this is 2-5. We're already almost halfway through uh, the second set of levels here. <laughs> milkshakes. Given is thirsty for milkshakes now. I do not blame you, milkshakes are delicious. Hmm, maybe I'll get one tonight. We normally order in on a Wednesday. Although I suspect the place we're gonna get food from uh, is a Bon Me place. That's what I'm gonna angle for anyway. Oops, that was badly judged. 
just focusing on the blob and not myself. Shot myself straight into some thorns. Um, yeah, the barn me place is great. They do great barn me. But they do not do milkshakes. Oh well, that's fine. What's your favorite milkshake given? I've had a couple of caramel thick shakes recently, and they've been pretty amazing. I'm a sucker for anything caramel. Let's try and get us both. Oh no, that's not gonna work. I need to keep doing this carefully, be on the opposite side to the blob. So we'll just shadow it for a bit. Stop here. And then, kaboom. Because it needs to be ahead of me to run into that guy. And now we're safe. Perfection. Gibbon is opting for a vanilla malt, which I cannot have anymore. Oh no, is malt, is it the gluten in the malt? That sucks, I'm sorry. Yep, that's the problem. Yeah, Skibbon has recently discovered a gluten intolerance, which is unfortunate. Oh, I hope that's a f good angle. Oh, but I have another candy, so if I just go down this way, I'll be able to do this. Yeah, that works. Cool. <sighs> Looks like I've trapped T-Rex in a pit. All right. tempted to go for the speed run and take that trick angle off that other whoa speaking of trick angles universe universe which you would know from uh let me see i think it was oh, who was it at this year's eurovision Oh no, I wouldn't be able to do a trick off that planet. I need to destroy that planet to get through because I can't walk around it. It's too close to the thorns. Um, yeah, it was a French language Eurovision entry from uh, last year. No, oh, dang it. Or am I confusing it with Spain from the year before? Ugh. Now I gotta check. Sorry. You know how hard it is to think of music when there's other music playing? watching it in the semi-final I was going yes that is gonna win it didn't win but it was really good okay yeah it was Switzerland uh Gion's Tears with To L'Univers beautiful song I do recommend checking that out the music video is great and the performance is staged really well as well with the moving set pieces uh that's too far to the left yeah To L'Univers is the name of the song Two words that I have taught you today. <laughs> um, Gibbon says, malt in and of itself does not have gluten, I don't think, but when you see malt on a product, it usually means malted barley or something. Uh, I suppose I should check and see what's used in shakes. Yeah, it might be worth doing. I used to have a can of malt powder, <laughs> which I would put in milkshakes.
But it's also an ingredient in things. Like I use, like Australians will know uh, Milo. Not me, that's my name, but also a, a powdered <laughs> chocolate um, drink that you put in milk and stuff. It's more popular over here than elsewhere, I think, but it might be available where you are. Of course, don't actually buy it because it's made by Nestle and uh, you should boycott Nestle because of all the horrible things they do. But I buy the knockoff version from Aldi and it's almost as good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, what are we doing? Let's think this through. We need to bring that blob all the way over here. We have one candy. So we need to destroy this planet. Uh, or we'll end up destroying it when we send the blob away. So we'll destroy everything on the way through on the return trip. But until then... We have these secondary planets to keep ourselves safe. Okay, cool. You can recognize a little bit of Shantae flavor to the music at times, can't you? Not that Jay Kaufman is like a one trick composer. He does all sorts of cool stuff. Um, he's also behind a lot of the Shovel Knight soundtrack. I don't know if it's all of it, but he does a lot of it, <laughs> I think. You can hear a bit of it at times in this as well, the chip tunes. Excellent soundtrack. Of course, um, Yacht Club is composed of a number of ex WayForward employees, as well as contracting uh, Kaufman, who is a current... Well, I don't know if he's an employee or a contractor or whatever. But yeah, he does a lot of way forward stuff, but he also does Yacht Club stuff. Okay, hopefully that's fine. Because we're going to go all the way back over there on the return trip while sending this little guy into that wall of blobs. Like so. And now if I do a perfect shot, I can make it all the way to the goal without even using this candy. Just some adjustment here. Or maybe. No, that's not right. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this works. Cool. Uh, yeah, so Gibbon checked her uh, milkshake ingredients. Malted wheat powder mixed with dehydrated milk. Darn. And she's saying she has more Shovel Knight than Shante. But yeah, he does all of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does all of Shovel Knight. That's great. Excellent soundtrack, by the way. Um, built to the limitations of the Ness asterisk because they saw fit to um, include within that limitation the uh, Konami music expansion chip that they used on the Japanese version of, uh, I think, Castlevania 3. So, yeah. They have... They have limited themselves in the soundtrack of Shovel Knight to what the Ness was capable of during... Oops, no, I need to blast back to the other planet and then do a long-range trick shot. Um, yeah, the limitations of the Ness within... Uh, yeah, within what was done on that platform with a special extra chip at a certain point. So, yeah. <sighs> anyway, either way, great soundtrack. Also, listen to the Castlevania soundtracks. They're great, too. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. Oh. Curses. Apparently, Jay Kaufman also had a hand in Cyber Shadows OST, given his telling me. Interesting. That's um, Yacht Club's first published game, I think. That was... Uh, sort of partnership. They didn't develop it, but they published it. They're still working on whatever is coming after Shovel Knight, not counting the two spin-offs, one of which just released recently and one is still to come. Okay, so I'm going off from this and then moving slightly so that I go over here and then we're going to do a trick shot to 
grab that candy and then use it afterwards. Does that look okay? There. Okay. Fingers crossed. Great. Perfect. Ah! Oh. <laughs> it scared me when she suddenly detached and floated off into space, but it's because I'd won the level. Ooh. 3D movie. I don't think the glasses fit T-Rex very well. Dinosaurs, of course, well, these kinds of theropods have eyes mounted on either side of their head because they're birds. And that's how birds are, most of them. Also, he's going to have trouble eating that popcorn with those claw hands. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Gibbon says that for Cyber Shadow Yacht Club, published it, but also pitched in for the final leg and acted as editors a bit. All right, cool. Yeah, a bit more involved than I thought. That's nice. Okay, what are we doing? I'm gonna blast one of these blobs into that vertical line. What else do we need to do? Well, that'll do for now. So now we're going over here. You got yeah. This is definitely a puzzle game, which requires you to think ahead, possibly plan out all your moves from the start. I'm kind of winging this one a bit, but it's working out so far. Yeah, all right. That's manageable. So we need to get behind this one. And then adjust our speed. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. Yeah, we gotta restart now. You only get one shot at that. That was a lot of words. Oh, by the way, France's entry for last year's Eurovision, also very good. So the French language had a good showing. Oh no, what have I done? What did Belgium do? Did Belgium do a French one? Oh wait, I'm playing a game. I'm not doing a Eurovision commentary. I've only got two modes, people. Games and watching Eurovision. Oh no, I did it again. Very charming little game, says Gibbon. I agree. I am extremely charmed by this. And it's also a great example of experimentation on the DSi platform. Um, using the DS's format in an interesting way. As well as the, you know, fledgling digital distribution platform. All the games on DSiWare are tiny, by the way. Very few megabytes to them. But they jam a lot of quality into this one. Within those limits. There probably was a hard limit, actually, but I don't know what it was. You hear about the WiiWare having a limit of 40 megabytes and how that ultimately led to Super Meat Boy being cancelled for the platform. That was a reference to the 40 megabyte in some game. What was it? I don't remember. Some cheeky little reference to 41 at some point. Anyway. Yeah, that caused the problems for people. I think maybe Telltale had problems with it too. With their episodic adventure games. Which, by the way, if you're interested in learning more about... I recommend the podcast Telling the Tale from our friends Mitchell Wolf and Dustin Jackson. 
They've just finished the Back to the Future Telltale series, which is kind of the turning point when they stopped doing traditional point-and-click adventure game style and went into The Walking Dead. Like, Back to the Future was the first proto-Walking Dead style um, game. All right. What are we doing here? How do I get through this? Oh, like this? Wait. Okay, we're gonna let T-Rex destroy this one and then drop another planet there. Move slightly. Oh, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. It's tricky, because... Yeah, you don't have much time, but I could have waited a bit there, actually. Okay, quick, quick smart, quick smart. Let's go. So we want to let him destroy this one. And drop another one. Oops, oh, I tapped too quick. And I ch pulsed off that one. Too bad. <clears throat> um, so, stuff. Oh! <laughs> Clench! Um, so, Gibbon, are you watching some GDQ at the moment? What's on? What has been on recently that's been interesting? Myself, I am not following along live because... I'm still catching up on hotfix shows from a couple of months ago. <laughs> I'm watching through the archives. While it's been on, I've been a bit too busy with other stuff to watch it live. But I'll, I am looking forward to catching up on some runs later. But like I said, I'm also catching up on a lot of older shows that they do when they're not doing the big events. Is this an AG to cure or an SG to cure? It must be... Because it's summer here, but it's not in the US, so must be AG to Q. Alright, so we're gonna line that up. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I waited long enough. Or I wasn't able to wait. But this is tricky. Oh no! I didn't have another candy. I don't know how to get through that. I've only got one. No, I've got two. But I think I need both, don't I? See, I've already messed up there. You've got to be really quick at the start. Hmm. What am I missing there? Do we go back and forth to get rid of those blobs? Possibly. But T-Rex just destroys things really quickly. Hmm. Because he's locked onto that. What now? Because now he's locked there. Oh, I think my angle's bad there. Oh, you're kidding. So it is currently a GDQ. Um, and Returnal is on right now. I've heard the name, but I, I don't know what that is. Returnal. Yeah, I can't picture anything. But Gibbon got up early to watch Final Fantasy XIII, the five hour Final Fantasy XIII run. Famously a game. Oh! Ah! Uh, a game that Gibbon bounced off hard, according to things I've heard her say about it. Uh, but she went back to bed afterwards. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so once it's locked on there... Ah! 
mistimed my click. Now, once I'm there, what do I actually do? Let's think this through. So I'm on that planet. That one's been blown up and then I can go through. But since you're waiting for the little blobs, there's not much time. So we could bounce back to the planet we've made above the larger one, which would pulse the blobs off. But T-Rex might have already destroyed it by the time we get back. We might be able to do it if we're quick. But then if it locks onto the second planet, that will have been destroyed. But once it locks, it kind of stays there, doesn't it? Mm. I'm not really sure. This one's tricky. Hmm. Yeah, um, I've, I'm not going to play Final Fantasy XIII, but I am going to play Final Fantasy XIII too sometime. Probably this year. Sometime. Uh, yeah, and then... Ugh. And that's gone really quickly, otherwise I could bounce back and forth. No! Uh, I feel like I need to create a planet behind me so that I land on its front side, you know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah, what, what intrigues me about Final Fantasy XIII 2 is the time travel element. People compared it to the Chrono Trigger games and saying like, oh, you know, Square Enix is making another time travel game, but it's not Chrono, oh well. But I figure, okay, what have I done? Is this, ah, uh, no, that's real bad. Yeah, this does, this is not working. If I smash that, well, I'll try blowing up the big one first and then seeing if I have time to bounce back. So I'm going to make another planet like here. I can't... Yeah, there we go. So I'm trying to be quick in this phase, but yeah, it's already been blown up. Hmm. I think it's probably doable, but then again, the blobs pause when you hit the planet. This is tricky, very timing based, which is unlike a lot of the other levels. It's more timing based than the rest of the game, you know? Whoops, that's badly positioned, isn't it now? Maybe we can... Nah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Gibbon says, I might go through 13 again this year. I learned a lot of good stuff during the GDQ run that would be applicable to making a casual playthrough better. That's great when that can when that happens. You can apply speedrunning techniques to make your your own experience better. It's great. Okay, so now that's there. Now we go here. And then... Oh, please. No. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, tricky one. But we got it. so cute. You really gotta wonder what their relationship actually is. Maybe I'll find out when I finish the game. First of all, it's this planet. Oh, the tutorial planet. Cancel. I wonder if I can like pick a level when I go here. Oh, okay. You just wait as she runs around and then it... Um, progresses the counter. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, they weren't really speedrunning techniques so much as they were notes on optimized equipment upgrading and boss strats and such. Oh yeah, still, yeah, same kind of thing. It's like... Optim optimal techniques, uh, yeah. That would speed up a speedrun, but also, yeah, help normally. Yeah, good stuff. Uh oh. Okay, so the death planets do have gravity, of course, which will draw you in, but you cannot land on them. So you must be very careful. Oh, wait. I just thought of something. Uh, two could be two. Or is it pronounced a bit differently? <laughs> like t two. Uh, no, you wouldn't. I think it's the wrong grammar. Because two is you, but that'd be like toi. Two would be in reference to like a verb or, or a subject or something. I don't have all the necessary vocabulary to talk about linguistics. If that makes sense. <gasps> no! The planet came in too late! It's getting harder. That means it's going to take longer. I don't know if I'll get to the ending. Oh man. Uh, I'm trying to do my own speedrunning techniques and they're backfiring, of course because I haven't practiced this at all. It's my first time playing it. I should have done more research into these kinds of gravity games. I was too busy doing research on how to get the emulator to work and all the other DSiWare games that I'll be playing later instead of focusing on this particular one. Okay. Okay. Oh, I hope that's good enough. Cool. Great. What? How do I do this? I think you gotta do a real trick shot here. Slingshot past the death planet without hitting it to land on that other one. Gravity! Okay, let's do it. Something like this. Ugh! <laughs> Something like that, but not exactly that. Something like this. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. <sighs> you need a higher angle, even than that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, so quite a high angle. <laughs> but that worked. This wavery background is pretty nice. The undersea look. Well, it's a little plain, I suppose. Okay. Now we just need a well angled shot over this way. Oh, that might not do it. Urgh. Oh, 
That's too high. Well, gravity, what are you going to do? What are some other runs that you would recommend from uh, recent, from, from in this event, given? Wow, I skipped the first planet there. Cool. I'll probably watch that FF13 one uh, to give myself a little bit of grounding before playing 13-2. Although they, <laughs> like, it does seem odd to play a direct sequel without playing the original, especially for an RPG like that. But there's concessions in the game to allow for people to do that because yeah there's like a before you even start on the opening menu there's there's this whole encyclopedia thing where you can review the events of the first game and it'll do little movies and summaries and stuff it's like we're bouncing off some kelp up there kelp kelp i'm drowning Okay. So with our two candies, we'll need one here and then one there, and then grab another one. Yeah, that'll work. That's fine. So this first. Okay, we're gonna be careful with this one. Don't go too far. Oh, what? Ah! I... It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. What I'm watching right now is the first ever showcase of the Final Fantasy 1 randomizer based on the new Pixel remasters, because they've only just launched it at the time of the video, which might be a month or so old. But yeah, I really like watching randomizer videos, especially for games I'm pretty familiar with. It's a great way to get some new kinds of enjoyment out of them, which is the same reason why people play them. Okay, that's cool. This will work. So what are we doing next? We want to do like a direct bounce that ends us up back here. Oh, I've gone too far, haven't I? And I can't walk any further because I'll run into that thorn. Ugh. They're getting pretty demanding here. In fact, I wonder if I shouldn't pack it in now, maybe show some other DSiWare stuff. Because at the rate things are going, I'm not going to finish this all the way, am I? Especially as it gets even more difficult. There's got to be full playthroughs online though. When I went searching, I found like individual level videos, at least. So that's something. Oh, I put that too close. Oh, we just scraped past. Goodness me. No! No! What happened? Uh, there's something weird about placing a planet there. All right, let's let's do a little bit of looking around at some other stuff. 
so it will have saved all my progress, so I can just reset from here. Oh, I need a break from this. Need a stretch. Um, hmm. What time is it? Alright, here's what I'll do first. Let's cover some wacky stuff. Uh, so the DSi wasn't just for games, you know. It had, like, cool apps that you could use to plan your life. Um, and to help you in your everyday <laughs> uh, things. For example, even though the DSi, which I can actually... What can I do? Hold this button, press this button. Oh, it crashed. Or I maybe executed the wrong command. Oh well. We'll just get that up again. That's the wrong window. Come on, this one. Goodness me. And I have to restart it when I've launched the emulator again because otherwise the touchscreen doesn't work. Oh! Yeah, let's check out some of the other photos that are stored on here. It's a photo of a DSi. Oh, that's the calendar. Wait, one photo? What was that Sailor Moon picture I saw earlier then? Oh, is this... Is this a problem with the, com the camera? It doesn't want to load that. Why do I... Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's Sail Moon. So there must be more than one picture. Are they stored somewhere else? Oh my goodness. Anyway, this is a pretty good selection of like good DSiWare games that are on here already. I haven't put all of them into my list to play. <clears throat> Ooh, Gibbons' copy of Cotton Rock and Roll arrived in the mail. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the new cotton game. I've played a few cotton games on the stream. This one's another side-scrolling shoot-em-up. But this one has Umihara Kwase as a guest character. Very cool. Um, well, I was... Oh, I forgot. Anyway, whatever. Um, no, let's do it. I'm dumb. Let's go. What are the pre-installed apps on a DSi? Well... Picto chat, I think, was pre installed. Wait. It's supposed to load the regular menu, sorry. Which doesn't sound as bad, by the way. DSi sound, yeah. You could make little tunes and the bird would dance to them. The shop, the download play, and all these are purchased games. Um. I guess it doesn't have as many default things as I thought. Oh, I see. So there's one on the SD card and two on the system. The picture of a DS showing a picture of a DS and the Sailor Moon picture. But of course in here, you've got the calendar mode. And you can put a memo on a date. And look far into the future. 2022. Imagine that. Anyway, that's all just to say that there is a default calendar function. But I guess there's not a dedicated clock application. And that's why we have Animal Crossing Clock. This, there's an Animal Crossing calculator and animal crossing clock app they're both still available on the 3ds for three australian dollars each there's also mario versions which i believe use the most boring of um super mario brothers one sprites probably sit back and enjoy a small taste of animal crossing you can even compose a town tune tune for your clock chime Isn't that cool? So I guess you start this up and then put your DS down and it'll play the hour with your own designed tune. What is the default tune? 
Huh, okay. So if you had the time, you could go through and manage that. Nice little design of a clock. Um, I guess that's it. That's all it does. Oh, it does timers. Okay. Or alarms, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. You can even use the sounds that you've recorded with that little bird app to make your own custom alarms. Yeah, you'd want to get up pretty quickly to turn this off, wouldn't you? I wonder if these are taken from the game or if they're unique for the Animal Crossing clock app. Um, I just think that the fact that they charge for this is kind of ridiculous. Um, it kind of looks like CJ there holding a pink balloon, but it's definitely not because he was introduced in New Horizons. I don't know who it is. I can't tell with this low res screen, but I believe this is, it's either Wild World or Let's Go to the City, the DS or the Wii installments. I don't know which one they're evoking specifically here. Anyway, it's cute. I, it's it's not a th $3 <laughs> value, I believe, but that is up to the individual's uh, judgment, I guess. Um, yeah, this is, I guess, when they're trying to make the DSi into something a little bit more than a games machine, but it, I don't know, I, I don't think it really took off. Um, especially because this is the just at the era when smartphones are coming in and they're just going to replace all these kinds of electronic organizer devices, PDAs and all that, they've all become obsolete at this point. Um, but they didn't quite know it at the time. Oops. So what else did they put out? Um, this was also $3, the Animal Crossing Calculator. Wow, it doesn't even have like the characters there. Well, what is one plus one? <laughs> it's like the Nooklings are tallying up your bells. Let us hear them say each number. Ready? Zero. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. I hope you can hear that okay. I'll turn that up a little bit actually. Number nine. All right, see you later again. Thanks for hanging out. Um, divided by six. Wow, what a great number. I love that number. Let's convert temperature. Ooh, so what's 200 C in Kelvin? Of course it's 473.15 because absolute zero is minus 273.15 centigrade or Celsius as I would say. Um, age? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, great! Cat years. 473.15 cat years is... How many human years? 2,000. Okay. Odd. One. Well, what does it think one human year is in cat years? Wait, what? Zero? I don't get it. Uh, let's make it ten instead. <laughs> Point three. I think I've got this the wrong way around. Because clearly a cat doesn't live as long as a human. So what's One, 10 zero. cat to human? 54. So a 10 year old cat is the equivalent of a 54 year old human. According to Animal Crossing Calculator. That's great. I didn't know it had this feature actually. And you can do the same for hamsters, budgies, rabbits, One, horses. Zero. And different sizes of dogs. So let's see how old a budgie is human years. Okay, that would be an 80 year old budgie equivalent. But what is a 100 year old budgie in cat years? Why it's 162.8 of course. <laughs> That's very useful. <laughs> um, oh wow, 
So like two seconds is how many centuries? That many, very cool. Um, I'm interested in what units they have. So yeah, MPH, KPH, feet per second, like you would need to know that. So speed of sound is 300 meters per second. And in kilometers per hour, that's 1,080. Great, it's very fast. What's MA though? Mark, of course, right? Mark is the speed of sound. So 330 is what it actually is. <laughs> uh, meters per second in Mark is one, or equivalent, approximate. Whereas light speed is um, uh, a lot. Three times 10 to the something. Wait a second. <laughs> one light speed is, hold on. Yeah, 10 to the eight. One, two, three. Yeah, three times 10 to the eight. I knew that. <laughs> I also know what it is in miles per hour for some reason. It's 186,000. Um, what? It's not. Oh, miles per second. We don't have miles per second. Oh well, we do have knots. That's great. Um, area. Meter squared, feet squared, yards squared, miles squared, hectare and acre. So these are metric, these are imperial. I think hectare and acre are both metric. Hectare is 10,000 square meters. One. Yeah, and an acre is, yeah, that much. <laughs> is, is two and a half hectares or vice versa. Uh, volume, mils, liters, cubic meters. Uh, what is a cubic meter in liters? A thousand. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Fluid ounce, pint, gallon. Different fluid ounce and different gallon? Oh my gosh, the imperial system is so whack. Okay, tons. Metric tons, of course. Stone and carrots. Yeah, stone. My parents measured their own body mass in stone. That's the only time I've ever seen it used. And carrots used for jewelry. Furlong? <laughs> How long is a furlong in kilometers? It's 200 meters. That's great. That's great to know. I'm surprised they don't have leagues in here. And that is Animal Crossing Calculator. What an awesome little feature that you pay $3 for. Um, the only Animal Crossing theming seems to be, like, the style of the UI and the little voices that pop up, I guess. Maybe the choice of the animals in the years is influenced by the animals that are in Animal Crossing? <laughs> okay, what else can I show you? Um, oops, I've accidentally resized the window. There we go. So we'll do some more games in the next stream, but for now let's just have a little look around at some of the silly little features. The TSI metronome, sadly this does not work in the emulator. I'd like to show you the metronome mode which has arcade Donkey Kong. <laughs> a furlong is 10 chains, says Given. That was very useful, thank you. Um, I'll show you what happens when I try to launch it, is I get an error message. Wait, it's working this time? No, there's the error message. You might not be able to see it. But it says, not yet 16, meaning that that feature has not yet been implemented in this emulator. So this is the error message that it gives when um, it can't access the camera. So I guess, I, I don't know what the metronome app looks like, but apparently it uses the camera or something, or it uses something that is not supported by this emulator. So it just doesn't launch. So I can't show you the arcade Donkey Kong feature in it, unfortunately, there's like a screen. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that's real? <laughs> uh, a chain is a measurement comprised of a hundred links. Okay, and a link is? <laughs> um, this is another little planner app that was available that's kind of cool. So this is, um, if you can read Japanese, uh, Hobonichi no Kento Techo, uh, which means Kenko Techo. I looked it up before. It's like Daily Planner or something. Um, 
Uh, Hobonichi is short for Hobo Nikan Itoi Shimbun, or the almost daily Itoi newspaper, a company that Shigesato Itoi, the creator of Mother, um, founded in 1998, which was like a newsletter, and he would write little columns in and just put interesting stuff in there. Um, it started selling goods, so one of its big lines of products is the daily planners or, or diaries um, and they're very well made and well presented and this is like a digital version of that so they sold this on the DSiWare shop um, Hobonichi had two other apps on their shop and they were uh, sort of route maps like a, a, a um, like a train map of Tokyo or whatever uh, and there were two variants of that for different years, apparently. Um, but I couldn't find those in the repository of DSiWare uh, games that I found. Also, you'll notice that it's in horizontal format. Some DS games did indeed expect you to hold the DS like a book. Um, open, up, open up on its hinge and then you, you hold the side and, and um, you're looking at it side on. Um, I like the little characters here. Uh, sadly, it doesn't... Oh, last time I tried it, it crashed. It seems to be working a little better now, but... <laughs> um, yeah, this squirrel doctor is going to talk me through stuff. It's wanting me to confirm the current date, whether I'm right or left-handed. Um, to write my name, okay. There you go, with a mouse. Oh, I've, that's the delete button, I see. Yeah, that's me. So what happens in this thing? <laughs> uh, now it wants to my date of birth. I was born in the year 4444. Nope, didn't like that. 1900, I'm that old, people. Uh, what month? Why, nine. What day, you ask? Well, also nine. Yes, that's absolutely correct. What's this? Oh, it wants to take a photo of me to use this like a profile, but that will crash the emulator, so I'll say no. I'm glad it gave me the option to decline. So what happens now? It's saving my data. <laughs> my neck is tilted on the side. I didn't think I'd be going very long on this, so I didn't set up an alternate layout that would have this in horizontal configuration. Um, I'm just curious about what features are available here. The music on this one is distorted as well, sadly. Like I said, that does happen with certain apps in this emulator. So I'll turn it down a bit more. So it's not as annoying. So what is this? Watashi no karute. I don't know what that is. Oh wait, go back. Uh, he's not gonna go back. Okay, well, it's forcing me into it. There's a very long tutorial in this notebook app. What? Oh, that's right. Um, this is actually like a health diary. So I think it's going to ask me for some like personal details. Like number four is um, food allergies um, and other stuff that will be like height and weight and stuff I expect. Uh, so this is for like tracking different things about you, which is a thing that smartphones do these days. This is a bit ahead of its time because they didn't do it at the time unless there were third-party apps that would do it for you. Anyway, that would explain why the squirrel is a doctor. Yeah, it's a health uh, diary, yeah. Um, not so much a daily planner. Um, oh, right, Gibbon is informing me about awesome measurement units. A link is the smallest unit, smallest unit in that measuring scale. According to Wikipedia, it's two-thirds of a foot or a bit over 20 centimeters. That's a really big link. If you think of an actual chain, if the link is 20 centimeters long, that's like a chain that holds a giant ship to in it, to its anchor or something. And an acre is an area measuring one furlong by one chain or 10 square chains. Oh my gosh, that's great. I didn't know that. So clearly hectare is not a metric unit. Hectare, uh, hectare is, acre is not. Heck, there's 10,000 square meters. I'm learning a lot today. This is great. Who knew that the DSi would teach me so much? 
Um, so I want to get back to that menu and just see what the other options were. Ugh, it's gonna... Why, of course I weigh 999. No, it doesn't accept that because it knows that's an, a, an absurd amount to weigh, apparently. Why I'm 99 centimeters, of course. Oh, there's so much. Do I have to do any? I don't have any food allergies, of course not. I do have medication allergies. It wants me to write it in, I expect, yes. Oh, using what, like, kanji input handwriting detection, interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay, hiragana, yeah, that's fine. I do know how to spell the, um, uh, the medication that I'm allergic to. When is it going to ask me to do it? Okay. So it's spelled like this. Uh, nope, it misidentified what I wrote, but that's okay. And then this. Yep, that's right. And then... Uh, oh no, my katakana is failing me. Oh yeah, it's this. Nope, wrong stroke order. That messed it up. How do I start again? Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Um, boot, who? Um, yeah, that's a boot in katakana, but what's the hiragana equivalent? Nope, other way around. That's the hiragana boot. What is katakana boot? It's just, oh, that's right. Of course I did it wrong before, because it's this. Yeah, that. Ugh. I'm embarrassing myself with my Japanese skills here. There. It got the wrong the first character wrong, but that's how you spell it. Um other allergies? No, I don't have any. Yeah, great. What's this? Do you smoke? I don't. Uh do you drink? Oh boy. <laughs> um, hobo, uh, mainichi nomu. I think that's mainichi. So, like, every day, sometimes, never. I don't think it was able to calculate my BMI because of my odd um, units that I entered. Okay, what else is here? Oh, a bunch of stuff that I can't read. It's all kanji. There's so much kanji. Well, that's enough of that, I think. Especially with that distorted audio. So I've got one more, like, little non-game app to show. Yeah, will that be all for today? That might be enough. There'll be plenty more to play later. <laughs> there, there's a lot I want to try out and show off. Um, so the last thing I'll do right now is Dekisugi Chinkuru Pack, the Too Much Tingle Pack. So Vanpool, uh, at this time, we're doing Tingle games on the DS. Uh, Tingle, freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land was released in Japan and Europe, not North America. Uh, their follow-up color or ripened tingles balloon trip of love was a japan excuse exclusive they also did a spin-off tingles balloon fight ds which was a club nintendo reward bonus only but this they put out on the dsi west shop i've looked at this in the store but then i didn't end up getting it because i had a japanese 3ds on loan and I decided, you know what, I'll just emulate this instead. And that's when I got the emulation working. <laughs> it was all for this. So what is this? Well, it's a bit like the other little applications. It's got a calculator function, like Animal Crossing Calculator. But it has other functions too, which we'll have a look at. Um, 
what is this? Price, people. I don't understand. Is this like if you if you're trying to pay for dinner and there's like a certain number of people? Wait, I don't. Oh man, I should have looked into this a bit. Wonderful. This. So what is this trying to tell me? It's something about money. All right, I'm going to pull out the translator. Oh, Gibbons reacting to the music on the title screen. Unfortunately, there is no music in the calculator function. So I can't read the kanji, but what I'm going to do is point my Google Translate app at the screen and ask it to identify the kanji. Secretary calculator. Kanji Dan Taku. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Secretary. And I don't know why it's asking me about people. Okay, I'm going to try and translate that sentence at the top. Oh my gosh. If you split the bill. I don't know why it's separating like men and women. So like splitting a bill at a restaurant or something. That's really weird. I don't get it. There was like a dating sim element to the second, like, or the third Tingle game. I wonder if it's like tying into that. I don't know. Very strange. All right, what else have we got? Um, well, of course, the coin. This is a key feature. <laughs> I just love Tingle showing up, sliding into different screens. Um, I was talking about Vanpool. So Vanpool made this as well as all the other single games. You might know them these days for creating the Dylan's Rolling Western series on 3DS. They've also assisted on a bunch of other Nintendo games and compilations. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is like how many coins you want to flip. Oh, I should, I should try and translate this before I do this properly. There's a lot of text here that I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even know what hazard it means. Ugh. I'll pull up my other translator. Hazard it. End, verge, extremity, outskirts, miss, fail. Okay, it's probably fail. <laughs> I see in a lottery ticket. So... This is more like a gambling thing. Well, I guess flipping a coin is usually... So, you're either gonna get a tingle or a fail. And these are different like modes that will determine how many like fails. So this time you don't want to get the tingle face because that's, that's an out. And you want to get a safe. Okay, but I've got two outs, which means I lose. Is this a game? Is this a game? I guess it's a kind of game. Ugh. So what's this one? What's this mode? I guess it wants you to do them in order. Apparently I'm doing it in order. Wait, did I win? What? <laughs> wow. 
Well, the music's nice and chill, but um, yeah, whatever that was is over. I'm done with that. Um, I don't know what the other fun functions are. Tinkle timer. Tingle timer. So you set it to a number of minutes and seconds. But that face, it's like claymation. Very strange. Just listen to those mouth sounds. <laughs> so we're gonna put our DS down and walk away. Boil an egg. Tingle's gonna tell us when it's ready. I know one minute is a short time to be boiling an egg, but I like them very soft. No, I don't like them at all. I don't eat eggs, but um, this is a hypothetical. Those eyebrows are waggling. Oh, he said something. What happened there? Back to the translation app. I'm going to try and capture that text if it pops up. I didn't know I would have to be so on edge during this. Yeah, what does that say? Uh, it didn't pick up all the handwriting. Uh, Watashi no something <laughs> 99 uh, hours no hmm? oh we're almost there no <laughs> 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 he's saying please stop stop <laughs> it's time it's time please stop <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> I don't think Gibbon likes the eyebrows. I, I do like that he's wearing what appear to be glasses, but they're LCD screens. Um, right. He says put in a time and then press start. I like that the kind of layout of the bottom screen looks like the back of some kind of device. Like the bottom looks like a battery compartment you'd slide off and at the top is, is like a uh, screw hole. So it's like it's a physical alarm clock. It's very cute. All right, what else we got? What's this? Chinkuru Dansa. Oh yeah, let's save that for last. Uh, Chinkuru something. I know this is like a fortune telling thing, which is... Very popular in Japan. Oh my gosh, oh no. Who are you? Is this a character from Rosie Rupee Land, maybe? Um, so this is asking, like, what kind of fortune you want. Um, <laughs> money, uh, love, or kududimpa? <laughs> Which is, of course, Tingle's magic words. Don't steal them. Just pick that. Okay, tell me something. Oh, we gotta pick a card, any card. Oh! Oh no, there's giant eyeballs. That's not nice. What are we doing? Yeah. What? Oh, I was just shuffling. Yep, yeah, turn to the right, spread them out. Okay. Yeah, that's my card. I don't like those tingle skulls. Why, why are they shaped like that? Oh no. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is telling me my, my fortune. Oh, which has a lot of technical language that I cannot read, of course. Let's see if Google Translate can do anything with it. Huh. It's picked up most of it. Select all. Tell me something. Okay. Your fortune, a little money, I got too big. I didn't know why I bought it and I regret it later. So this is a sort of buyer's remorse situation. Do you really need it? Isn't there a similar thing? Is there a place to put it? If you stop buying it and forget about it, that's about it. Touch the screen to stop the fortune telling. Okay, I didn't really understand that. Um, let's try the Kudurimpa one. 
Let's see what that does. Oh, no, she's leaving. Fortune time is over. Oh, it's entered it into my database of fortunes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. Um, it's a fun little theme here. The things to interact with and the way it's presented. Yeah, so let's do this again. We're shuffling. This time, go to the left. Yes. Oh, wow. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that picture down there, but let's see what translation tells me. Lover. This is the lover's card. This is the tarot. Normal position. You have good interpersonal relationships and communication. Well, I know that's not true. It's nice to go out with someone or join a circle. The lover's card shows the connection between people. Whether or not you can have a lover will be determined by your love luck, so come back later. All right, well, we don't need that. Oh, sorry, he's asking me if I was finished. Oh, what's that? Um, so, of course, this is connected to the Legend of Zelda series, um, given... Uh, I, I was thinking before whether she's from Rosy Rupee Land. Gibbon said, I think she's original to this. But noting that she's got the Sheikah eyes on her cloak, which I did not pick up on, that's great. Of course, the Sheikah symbol replaced the moon and star. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the Gerudo. Yeah, yeah, the Sheikah Eye, yeah, without the teardrop, by the way, so it predates their betrayal by the royal family, according to the Ocarina of Time manga. <laughs> but yeah, she does indeed have the, the Sheikah Eyes on the cloak, and a rupee on a headband, of course. Alright, so that was that. That's fortune telling. There's an, one more function to the too much tingle pack, but I don't know if it'll work because it involves a camera. Um clipboard very cute so tingle dancer is a little tingle marionette which we can oh that's the title screen music great oh as long as we crank this at the right speed the music is correct otherwise otherwise it's too fast or too slow he's doing an air guitar but there's other buttons here with different backgrounds okay now I'll tingle as a hula dancer and I'm glad it doesn't actually use a live feed from the camera for an AR situation it's just pulling uh, photos from the SD card on the DSi or the memory of the DSi so we're gonna get a lovely look at Sailor Moon and that other DSi okay What's this one? <laughs> Disco style. <laughs> I'll try my best to crank this at the proper <laughs> uh, speed for the tempo. Just when I was getting good.
Oh, I accidentally right clicked, which opened up a menu and then it all fell apart. But that's all right. Fourth one, ballet style. Who are those other tingles? We meet three other tingle-like people in Wind Waker and Minish Cap and all that. But they all have different colored tunics. Oh, I did it again. I right clicked. Oh well. I'm kind of interested in what's happening on this screen. There's the fortune teller's book over there, but there's also the little tingle bird. That's very cute. Um, also the red balloon, which has always been a part of Tingle's iconography. From Majora's Mask to Hyrule Warriors. And of course, detour in Tingle's Balloon Fight DS. Uh, I keep right clicking, it's a real problem. <laughs> Um, all right, that might be enough for today. What a silly little thing. Oh yeah, there's one more thing to show you on this screen. Uh, the credits. Which uh, unfortunately has uh, the music distortion or the auto distortion problem. But this is a good time to point out something that I should have been looking for earlier, which is that any um, app or game on the 3DS, on the yeah 3DS or DS or DSi, that uses both screens in a contiguous uh, fashion where both screens are showing parts of a larger whole, sometimes they account for the gap, the physical gap in between the two screens on a DS device, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're directly, um, you know, pushed up against each other. So it said Tico art there. I wonder if Tico is the name of the fortune teller character. Anyway, um, this particular credit screen is accounting for the gap, which is why it looks odd uh, in this layout, because this layout does have the screen squished up right next to each other. But there are some games that render it um, that way uh, um, with you know game graphics directly abutting against each other <clears throat> over the two screens so yeah each part of this pack has separate people working on it um, Not that I've been reading all the names, but... Hopefully this has been an enlightening experience. <laughs> Given's telling me I should flesh out the Zelda wiki entry for this. I suppose I could create an entry for the fortune teller character. I'll have to review these credits a bit to see if there's any information there. Um, DSi games also have digital manuals, much like 3DS games. So I'll see if there's any enlightening information about... Um... The kanji is way too small to read, but it says that the A button does something, but when I press the A button, nothing happens. Oh, now it is happening. Why? Oh, that's the manual. Great, great, great. Okay, um... Go Aisatsu. Kono Tabi wa Nintendo DS. This is very basic information. This is what buttons there are. Uh, the different functions. Okay. So this is the fortune telling mode. Um, tarot card, or tarotto, as they call it. Yes, over-explaining everything, great. The calculator. Uh-huh. 
So this will be explaining what that whole bill calculator thing is for. Um, <laughs> if you are interested. So there's sub modes here. Yeah, coin flips. Uh huh. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's the manual. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, I guess that'll do for this stream. What a weird stream. Uh, I don't know why I, I entered it like that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'll be doing in future ones, but there's a lot to show off. There's at least one other game in this collection of games, including the other folders, that I want to go deeper on and show to a greater extent, um, but you'll find out which one that is on a future stream. But I'll, I'd also like to show off some of the other titles in the DSi library, especially things that haven't been ported elsewhere, things that have stayed exclusive to the platform. Um, I will show you one more thing, which is what happens when you launch Curling Super Championship by Sapronia, based in Slovakia, which is nice. Always good to see developers from other places. Okay, so this is the title screen, of course. You can advance this by touching the screen, which gives you a little sound. But then this menu loads with no text and it's not interactable. So you're stuck when it gets here, sadly. Sorry, Gibbon, I really would have loved to show off a curling game. Um, but you never know, this might still be available for the 3DS in your region. I checked, it's not in my region. I can't buy this game on 3DS and play it properly, but it might be available for you, potentially. And it is exclusive to the DSiWare. Cypronia, by the way, they had a pretty um, sizable output, but I no noticed the name Jagged Alliance on there, which is a pretty well-regarded classic uh, tactics RPG game or whatever. They were responsible for the DSi web port, I think. Anyway, curling. <laughs> yes, it's unfortunate. But that'll do for today. Hope you enjoyed seeing some of the wacky stuff that the DSi could get up to and some of the exclusives on it. Um, if you're interested, I'll have the tutorials for how to emulate it linked below. Otherwise, some of these are still available in the 3DS eShop. And as I said, some of them imported elsewhere, like um, especially Risky's Revenge. But anyway, uh, well, it goes without saying, all the apps and calculators and stuff that I was showing off in the latter portion there, they're all exclusive to this platform. They, of course, were not ported anywhere else. But you can buy a physical copy of a Hobonichi notebook from their website, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that'll do for today. Thanks for joining me. This has been silly. Um, thanks for putting up with me. And stay safe out there, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>